Okay, so welcome to another little After Effects tutorial. Uh, this is on the billboard replacement assignment, and I'm going to go through a lot of the same stuff we went through in class using some different footage, uh, but this time I'll actually do it with the billboard to kind of walk through that process. So I have here uh, my clip that has the billboard in it, and I'm going to create a new composition uh, per David's advice the other day. I'm going to drag it right to the new composition uh, option here and that's going to create a composition with the settings already matched to what the original footage was. In this case I can see up here this is HD footage 1920 by 1080. So uh, I have that set. One other thing just uh, for convenience sake when you use that option uh, by default the time code of your sequence will come in as the same as the time code of the footage. Now that can be helpful for some workflow management things where maybe you know the time codes of the footage that you want to use and this way you can just match that up with the time codes of the sequence and get the right parts of the shot. Just for ease of keeping track of things over here today, what I want to do is actually just start this at zero so we can see more easily how long things are. Um, I can right click on my sequence itself here to bring up my composition settings menu. And I'm going to change the name to replace billboard. And then down here at the start time code, which was defaulted to the start time code of the clip I brought in, I'm just going to highlight that and say 0, 0 and start my sequence at 0. And what that does now here over in my rulers, I can actually see how long things are going as it runs. OK, so what I want to do here is uh, replace the image on this billboard with something else um, and then make it look like it's actually there. So the first part, just sort of putting something in over it, is pretty straightforward um, and is similar to what we've done before with some masking. Uh, the trick will be to just kind of then make it match the space a little more. So uh, I brought in here a poster for a film. And I said, you know, let's just make that billboard be an ad for this poster. So I dra dragged it down here to a new layer. And I'm just opening up the transform option so I can see it a little better. It's a pretty big image, so I'm going to shrink it down a little so we can kind of get the sense of the space. And what I want to do is just kind of put this graphic here at the top. Uh, I'm going to lay that over the billboard like it's an ad for this movie. And then we'll add some text to put the title of the film. Um, it's a handy little trick when I'm trying to line things up correctly here. Uh, I'm just going to lower the opacity on this a little so I can see through it and can kind of see exactly where things are lining up. And I'll bring the opacity back up to 100% later. Um, but while I'm lining this up, I want to do that. So I could, I can just grab this and sort of move it around. And I'll grab this corner and stretch it. And uh, when I grab a corner of a layer, whether it's an image or a video, I can sort of stretch it in any direction I want. If I hold down the shift key, that will make sure it stays in the same proportions as the original. So you can see as I'm dragging it here, it's staying the same proportions. If I let go of that shift key, now I can make it very narrow or very thick and sort of spread out how I want. So I'm just going to keep sort of the same scale, same proportions. And that's a little smaller than I wanted. And say something like, oops. Say something like that looks pretty good. Okay, and you'll notice what I've done here, if I zoom back in, is I'm actually making it a little larger than I want. I'm going to push H to go to the hand tool so I can sort of move this around. When you're in the hand tool, by the way, I'm not moving anything in the composition. I'm just moving what part of the composition I'm seeing in this window. So if I zoom out, you can see if I use the hand tool, I'm just sort of moving my view. Um, uh, and the reason I want to go a little bit bigger here is what I'm going to end up doing is creating a mask um, on this. And I want to make sure when I mask it that I don't accidentally have a little bit of the original image showing or anything like that. I want to make sure I have enough of my new image to really fit the whole thing. I'll hit B to go back to this. I want to just move it over a little bit here. 
Okay, so I got kind of the right size. Now, something you'll notice, um, and it's not immediately obvious just looking at this image, but when I have this overlaid, you can see that this is not um, exactly lined up with the horizontal and vertical. The billboard from the perspective the camera's at is at a little bit of an angle, um, and that's fine. That's what makes it look like it's actually there as part of it, because um, we're not shooting dead on. Uh, so I want to adjust this. And I can do this with my position and rotation and such. Um, something that's going to be handy is uh, down here where you see this little 3D cube. You might remember from an earlier assignment, that's what makes something into uh, a 3D layer that I can move in three dimensions. So I'm going to do that. And you'll see now for my position and scale and orientation and rotations, um, I have some other options available to me now. So uh, this is going to allow me to rotate this around um, and move it a number of ways. You can see that's almost like it's sort of flipping down in front of us. I'm going to click there and set that back to zero. This is like it's sort of turned towards or away from us. Um, and I think this is actually turned just a little bit away, so I'm going to do that. And then I also have this, which is sort of rotated, rotating this way along the z-axis. And so what I'm going to do is just manipulate those a little bit. Um, I can also mess with the orientation, um, which essentially is affecting the same thing um, if I'm not actually animating this. I'm just sort of getting a static image. Like a half there. Okay, and you can see what I'm trying to do is just kind of line this up so it's sort of facing the same way as the original billboard was. And now I got something that's more or less lined up there. Um, so I'm going to make a mask, go to my pen tool or press G while I'm on this layer. And uh, sort of rough in some things. Um, I could just make a single box. Um, I'm actually making a couple of extra points just to give myself some leeway um, in moving this. Okay, so I got something like that. I'm bring this point down right there. And you can see my hand tool. Over on this side, I've missed the very edge of this by just a little bit, so I'm going to pull this out of here. So I want to make sure I've got this whole thing covered. So in this case, I want my mask to actually be a little bit outside the original image, and you can kind of see where it is there. Um, the other thing I'm going to do with my mask is just a tiny bit of feathering and this is to match the characteristics of my original image. So this is not a super high res image, particularly when I zoom in this closely. You can see the edges here aren't super sharp. There's just a little bit of fuzziness to them. Um, I don't want to feather this a ton because I'll start to see that sort of blurring out there as that goes. Um, but just a just a tiny bit to make that edge not quite as precise. Let's try to select that. And now that I've got this lined up the way I want, I'm going to go back to this layer and make it completely opaque so I'm not seeing that other image through it. Okay, so now I've got this billboard um, image positioned pretty well. Uh, it looks like it's kind of in the right spot. Uh, it totally looks like I've just composited something else in there. I'm going to feather this just a little bit more. Um, it definitely does not look like a billboard that's there. It looks like I've dropped an image in front of it. So now the question is, wh what do I need to do to make it look like it's actually in that space? And there's going to be a couple things in terms of the characteristics of the image. And then the other thing I'm going to want to do if I'm really trying to do this right is make sure it perfectly stays with the image. So if I play this clip, you notice there's a little bit of uh, shakiness in the camera movement. Um, it's on a long lens, and so we're seeing a little bit of jitter there. Um, and so we'll want to correct that to make sure that the image stays locked to that position. 
Um, but before I do that, I want to try to just get this image looking a little better. And a couple of things you can note, I always think a good thing to do when you're trying to match something in reality is look at the original image and see what it looks like. And the couple of things that I want to note here, one is this is not super sharp. Um, if I zoom in here, you can see it's kind of pixely. Uh, again, that's a limitation of the resolution of the image. Uh, compared to this, which is perfectly sharp. So I'm going to want a little bit of a blur there. If you look at this text down here, it's not that this is out of focus, it's just I'm kind of reaching the limitations of this, and I can tell this is sharper. So this, that'll be one thing I want to change. And then the other thing is uh, the sort of color space of this. So if I'm looking here, if you look at her uh, shirt, this looks like it's probably supposed to be black, but it's not really coming in as a black. This is not a color graded image, so maybe in the end it would come out that way. But everything's kind of muted. It's a pretty low contrast um, look here. And when I compare that to this, I have this very white white, this completely black black, and that sort of sticks out with the rest of this image. It's not kind of existing in the same um, color brightness range. So let's tackle both of those. Um, First thing I'm going to do is just see if I can deal with the color. So I'm going to pull up my effects presets. If you don't have this uh, over here, I can go to Window and select Effects and Presets. And I have all these different options here. Um, what I'm going to end up looking for will be under Color Correction. But if I can't think of where it is, I can type in things I'm looking for. And you could try a couple different things here to see what works. You might try like oops, a brightness and contrast filter and see if you can brighten it up and lower the contrast and if that works. You might try a sort of color color correction, or color control. Oops. Um, but what I actually want to do is mess with what's called the levels, and this will make more sense when we get to color grading. Um, and it's under the color correction option here, and here's levels, and I'm just going to make sure I have this layer selected. And then I can either drag this over or double click on it, and it will come up in here. Um, and for this point in the semester, I'm more concerned with you having sort of the ideas about here's the types of things I would try and mess with and that you can get this perfectly. And in this case, even if you don't know exactly what effect you would want to look for, you should be able to tell there's something with the colors and the brightness and the contrast that you want to mess with. Um, in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm looking at this and saying, well, the problem is my blacks are too black, whereas the blacks in the main image are just kind of like a gray. And same thing, instead of these sort of off-white whites, um, I've got a really bright white. So using this control, what I'm going to do is bring my blacks output levels up. So they're not outputting it full black, they're outputting it more of a gray. Um, I'm going to do the same thing with my whites and bring those just down a little bit. So they're not outputting at white, but at like a more muted white. So you get something now that looks like that. Um, I'm going to go a little... So, you know, something like that, where I'm now getting um, more in the same color space um, that this was, in terms of, you know, where my blacks and where my whites are sitting. Um, and I think I actually want to dial back my blacks just a little, but bring my whites down a little more. Okay, and that kind of matches in that same space now, if you look at that. Um, I could tweak, tweak it some more if I really wanted to get it perfect. Um, then the next thing I want to do, let's say I'm happy with that, is uh, I just want this to be a little lower resolution. Again, it's still kind of too sharp here. So there's a couple different ways you could do this. I could start with a lower resolution image. Um, but I like this because I have the, I'm bringing in something high res, and I can always kind of make it lower resolution. Um, and by doing it in After Effects, instead of bringing in a lower res image, I have a little more control over exactly how they do that. And uh, kind of the simplest way to do this, and one that we looked at in class, is I'm just going to put a little blur on it. And you'll see there's a whole bunch of different blur effects. Um, you could try these out and figure out kind of exactly what's going to work the best for you. Um, I'm just going to go with the simple Camera Lens Blur, which is in the Blur and Sharpen options. So I'll double click on that and bring it in. 
So my effect for that are here. I'm going to shrink down the level thing so I can see all my blur controls. And I have all sorts of different things here that I could mess with. Um, and I just want to try to get the same amount of sort of blurriness that I had on this text down here. So here was my original image. Now I've got a little bit of blur on it. And that looks some of that might be just a hair much. I'm gonna maybe dial it back a little bit. Something like that. So again, here's the original, which is really sharp. And now I've just blurred it a little bit to kind of look like we're seeing it at that distance. Um, and then the last thing I want I would want to do with this is um, something that we're not gonna really be able to tell until you start watching the image move. So let's deal with the um, motion first, and then we'll see if there's anything else we want to do. So if I play this, remember, you can see the shot's moving a little bit, but my image is staying static. So this is something we did not talk about in class last week. We're going to get to this week, but um, I'll give you a little preview, which is tracking. So I'm going to select the layer that's moving, which in this case is the original footage layer, this camera layer here. In fact, I'm just going to hide this. Um, hide my new image for a second. You don't need to do that, um, but it's going to make it a little easier to do what we want to do. So I have my layer selected. I'm going to go under the animation menu up here and say I want to track motion. So I'll select that and you'll see I get this little track point option showing up here and I also get some options showing up over here for tracker. Um, so I'm going to take this, oops, take this and move it over here. And you'll see what happens as I'm moving it is it's sort of blowing up right what's under it. And I'm going to put it kind of right on the corner of this billboard here. I'm going to zoom in so you can see that. OK, so in my tracker, what I have is two boxes. And this smaller box is the thing I want to track. And what I'm looking for is something that's going to be easy for the computer to identify. Here's where it is. Here's where it changes to something else. So if you can find something that's very distinctive, there's nothing else around it that looks the same, um, and that has sort of clear borders and edges, that works the best. So this works pretty well. I got this nice corner of the billboard against this open sky. Um, it's a clear point. There's nothing else around it that's likely to be confused with this particular um, piece of image. So that's a good thing to select. And that's my inner box is what it's going to try to track. My outer box is where that might move to. So if I have a shot that's moving a lot, I could make this really big and say, okay, in the next frame, this part of the image could be anywhere in this giant box. So that gives me more flexibility. It also takes longer for the camera to, or sorry, for the computer to track because it has to search this whole thing and make sure it's finding the thing that looks the most like this. In a shot like this, where really what I'm talking about is just a little bit of um, jiggle or shakiness. I'm not talking about giant pans or moves or something like that. I can keep my tracking box pretty small. Um, it's not likely that in one frame this point is going to move kind of beyond this space. So I've got that selected. And at this point I can uh, deal with later. It doesn't specifically matter where it is. That ends up being my anchor point. I'll just go ahead and put it in there. Um, over here I have my motion source, which is where that original thing is that I wanted to track. And I'm doing a tracker for position. You can also track rotation and scale. So if I had something where something was getting closer or further um, or spinning around and I want to track those aspects of it as well, I can check these boxes. Um, but here I just want to track the position. Kind of is it moving up and down, left and right? Um, and then the last thing is I have a target, which is where this tracking information is going to end up. Uh, I can always change that later, but it is by default set to the correct place I want right now, which is um, my new layer that I put on top of it. If I wanted to, the tracking information to go somewhere else, I could hit Edit Target and select a different layer. In this case, it selected that by default because it's the only other layer. Okay, so once I'm set, I'm going to go to the beginning of the period I want to track and hit this little forward button to analyze forward. 
and you'll see that uh, track point is actually doing a pretty nice job of staying right on that corner. And I could I would do this for the whole shot. In this case, I'm just going to stop it at five seconds because that'll be plenty for us to see how it worked. And what you see when I zoom in, there wasn't a whole lot of movement, but you can see all these little keyframes it put in as that point just moved around slightly. Now, since I sent my uh, target to uh, this layer, to my new image on top, when I hit apply, that data is going to transfer over to there. So I'll hit apply. I say I want to apply both the X and Y dimensions. If I just wanted to apply the horizontal or just the vertical movement, I could do that. Hit OK. And you'll notice here what happens if I go back to my um, overlay image. It put all that data into uh, the, into keyframing the position. Now, what actually happened in this case, and this has to do with where the anchor points were set up, um, is it moved that whole thing out of position. And I'm going to just move my anchor point to correct this. Um, I don't want to change my position data. Uh, because that's what I just keyframed everything for um, using the tracker. So instead, I want to change my anchor point. I'm going to take that and oops, and I just did exactly what I said not to do. <laughs> Go back to my anchor point and I'm going to put this where I want it, and the anchor point is not being keyframed. So once I set this, this will stay in the same place. Get this close to right, need to get a little lower here. Okay, that looks like that is almost back where it's supposed to be. Okay, so let's say I'm happy with that. Um, so now, as I scroll through this, you'll see what's happening is that tracking information um, that I got off of the billboard layer is now attached to my overlay image. So when I hit play, they're going to kind of move together. And you can see that the track end here wasn't perfect. I'm getting a little bit of motion on the top layer that I don't like. So I could try retracking retrack, re with a different point, or I could go in and just adjust some of those keyframes manually um, if there's a couple of places where it just moves a little bit more than I want. Um, so this could still take some fine tuning, but if you look at the big moves, it's kind of getting where it needs to go. So that's the idea of what I'm trying to do with tracking. Now, the last thing I want to do on this is, um, you might have noticed when we're zoomed in on this, and playing it. And let me go kind of over here, some different stuff. Um, you see in this area this sort of heat wave thing, um, which is we're out with, with it's a hot day, there's some cars driving by here with some exhaust and stuff coming up. So we get that little bit of ripple effect um, in front of the image. And we're actually going to see. A little bit of that even in the billboard here. You can see that sort of movement. And that's going to be one of the things that helps us buy that that was actually there. And so what I'd like to do is do something similar with this image. Um, because right now, if I'm zoomed in on here, you know, I'm seeing that sort of heat wave movement on this, but not on my new image. And that's going to make it look like um, something I added in. So uh, this would be something you could play with and try different ways to do. I'm going to show you uh, one possibility. I've got my layer here. I'm going to go to my effects. And uh, I happen to know there's an effect called turbulent something, turbulent displace. There we go. I'm going to take that and put it onto this image. And you can see it immediately starts distorting the image. So I'm getting that distortion I want, although that's obviously way too much. Um, 
and then this is something where I would just have to go and tweak the settings to get to kind of something that looks like about what I want. Um, in this case, uh, a lot of these numbers I have to bring down. So let's see if I shrink that down to like 20. So I'm getting a little bit less distortion, but I still have these sort of giant humps and twists on here. So I'm going to shrink this down as well. Let's see if I tried that at like 15 or let's see, 12, something like that. Um, and that's going to do that distortion, but if you look that distortion staying the same as I scroll through here, and what I really want is that distortion kind of changing over time to get that sort of sense of the hot air moving in front of it and distorting the image a little bit. And I can do that with this thing called evolution. So I'm just going to make a keyframe at the beginning, and let's say that's like two, and then I'll go to end of my clip and make another keyframe, and let's just say this went up to like 20. So it's evolving and changing, and now you can see as I'm moving through this, if you look kind of right here in particular, you can see it pretty obviously, I'm getting that little bit of distortion as this plays. And I can't play it in real time, but as I drag this through, you can sort of see that little bit, and that's going to be one more added layer of making this feel like it's actually taking place in that space. So once I got that done, um, if I wanted to put my title in here, I could do the same with that. I'd probably overlay similar effects, so some kind of a blur to make my title not look too sharp. Um, I could mess with the levels uh, or the colors to make sure that it sort of has the same color and brightness properties here, and I'd probably again need to do some sort of heat wave effect with this turbulent displace or something else. And that would be the basics of how I'd go about replacing a billboard, and then I could add this to my render queue and output it.